Morning, Scott. Good morning, Norm. How are you? I was about to say Mike, but it's funny. I I just I just met yet another Mike this week. This is going to be an endless. You got joke. a lot of mics in your life. You got a, right. lot of, a lot of mics. No, but um, no. How's your week going? Dude, it's going good. In fact, uh, here we are, another Wednesday morning, and I've got a full cup of coffee and ready to start chatting. So yeah, it's all good. No, great. I think um, uh, as uh, spring is upon us, and yeah. I think uh, a lot of folks, you know, we say summer is PCS season. When when is military retirement season do you is there a, a general trend from your perspective wow. what a great question and uh you know i haven't really prepped for it right but it seems you know it seems that that april may window kind of through october right that that seems like kind yeah. of busier i don't have any data really to kind of back that up for me what it seems like right yeah for me i just I, I I I feel like I hear September a lot and kind of late May June you know, yeah whatever whatever that means anyways but well, well we're it, it might be to, we're starting to track a lot of that right and you yeah. know once we bring up Blue Water Digital I'll be able to pull that up and look through that and uh, Steve Weeman and myself will be able to go through the data and I'll be able to tell you hey here's well, actually when the people are stepping into terminal right and and this is kind of the point of today's conversation you know what's some of the data we can use to you know make more informed decisions right mm -hmm. and you know, the timing of things of course important what are the value of things um mm -hmm. and timing of it could be relevant is you know maybe maybe we're doing a like a virtual you know online kind of a, a more organized uh, workshop where we get yeah. other speakers coming in or something maybe we would do that in september when it's it's more hot and uh or maybe we should do it six months before anyways that's a, a good data point to discuss but the topic of today's show was um, around the idea of you know, we've served for this career in the military. If you've done 20 plus 30 years, we know we've earned the pension and we know we've earned the opportunity to uh, join the civilian workforce, um, not ahead of your peers or anything like that. But you've got an established career behind you. Yes, there's going to be a transition. Um, people realize, you know, it's not just a step right over necessarily all the time sometimes it might be right um but what's not obvious is okay well what what is it worth what should i be asking for or what can i even expect especially maybe this conversation mike is geared more towards people who um just are now starting to enter the retirement window and go mm -hmm. like all right there's many things out there at some point i got to get paid where what's the market what's the marketplace out there i mean a hundred thousand dollars today is not what a hundred thousand dollars what it was just a few short years ago and sure. we, we understand that um a lot from the financial side of things so what i wanted to do is bring up uh the uh total military compensation uh, calculator just for a quick um you know get us in the ballpark you know kind of show us you know, what are we expecting when we're coming off active duty? We're used to seeing what, what's in our LES, but what's, what it says on your LES doesn't always equate to the overall value you're getting from serving in the military. You, you know, medical's paid for. They, well, they yeah, move, a lot of tax shelter. Yeah, yeah, they move you across the country. You're barely paying any taxes. And what I like about this calculator, you know, we're looking at an 06 with 30 years, and depending on your zip code, and uh, I'm guessing this is the Virginia Beach area, yeah. right, Mike? So, yeah. you know, 06 in Virginia Beach, you know, at 30 year, obviously they're going to have a high, you know, annual basic pay, uh, you know, 170. But the total regular military compensation is already well over $200,000. And I, I think what I, what I recognize is that we've just gotten so in the mindset of six figures, you know, once you get over six figures, that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it is, of course. Um, but the lifestyle we've been living, it, it doesn't, it, you know, it's, it's, we got to get our, our kind of uh, reframe it in our head to recognize sure. that we need to replace this amount um, often if we want to maintain that lifestyle. So your military pensions going to be doing some of that, but 
In fact, you need to replace more than this because your taxes are going to be higher as well when you're getting civilian income. So anyways, just want to kind of frame the conversation about, yeah. you know, hey, wh what are we looking at? Don't forget what you actually were making versus kind of what you see on a monthly basis. And these are big numbers. I mean, they're serious numbers and you've earned it. So let's make sure you you go in with the right framework to get it if uh, if that's what you're looking to do. No, it's a good it's a good frame discussion, right? And gosh, it's you, you know my mind is just racing, right? There's several things that that I want to share with our audience, right? Um, one of the first things that that we put out and we have discussions with our members, right? Is um, you you can't skip the first and probably most important step, which is having a purposeful approach to what it is you want to do, right? Uh, so often we will get caught up and focused on exactly what you're highlighting right here is the compensation side of it. And so often what our members find that when they do step into career progression, right, this next phase in their life, that it's not just compensation that they're concerned about. They're concerned about other things in life. They want quality of life. They want flexibility. They want a location. They want to do a specific type of work. They're looking for a better fit, right? Uh, and all of these things are the total package, right? That come together that, that members will then start to either feel um, contentment with or uneasiness with because they haven't found these things. Compensation is a part of it, right? Uh, but what I would say is all, lots of data out there and so many things that we've learned in the compensation world. Like over the last three years, we have started to see compensation rates here in the Norfolk, Hampton Roads, Virginia Beach area start to approach what historically you and I would have thought you know, only achievable if we were up in the Northern Virginia or DC area, right? And the great thing about data and having insight is you'll see a change, but then the bigger question is, well, why am I seeing this, right? And so, for example, like I even go back to like 2015, 2016, you know, early on in my own career progression, right? If, if guys came out and they said, man, I'm worldwide deployable, and I'll go anywhere, I'll move anywhere, and I'm looking at big companies to do these kind of things, right? You stood a pretty good chance of, of tapping into some, you know, a large amount of compensation, right? Like what, you know, if you want to go up to the DC area and step into a major defense industry player, right? We, you're, you're going to see anywhere from 220, 225 to 245 to 260 as a base pay kind of figure. And then there'll be machinations of signing bonuses, um, you know, annual performance bonuses, other types of direct and indirect form of compensation on top of that for a total compensation package of, you know, in some cases, you know, even uh, higher than 275, 300 and, and on up. Uh, some of the rates that, you know, if you were going to touch that 225 bracket as a 06 retiring, you know, years ago, that 2015, 2016, 2017, that was normally associated with a move to D.C., Man, something happened after COVID. I will tell you, there are a number of companies here in the area, right, uh, uh, in the Hampton Roads area that are starting to, you know, starting to approach some of those higher levels of compensation that historically I would have thought would have only been achievable like in a, a space like D.C. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean. Obviously, assuming that has to do with the remote work. And so is that just meaning yeah. that more positions are being offered where they're like, yeah, come up to D.C. every once in a while? Well, it's a good question, right? I mean, this gets into the why are we seeing this, right? I, I The data is one thing I can see. OK, you know, you've got 200, 300, 400 people through the gonculator and this is what it looks like. And we're seeing these increases. Now the question is why? Are companies uh, that are hiring individuals in this area, are they bidding the work at a higher rate, right? So that they have more uh, available compensation to kind of put towards, uh, you know, compensation for employees. You know, I don't know what the answer is, 
but it's definitely noticeable, right? We're seeing companies that are able to do that. But let me let me take a bigger step back because we kind of dove right in and we're focusing yeah, yeah. on compensation. You know, what I want to put out for the members and the listeners, everybody out there is, you know, I love going to the calculator and I love, you know, uh, you know, and that's what everybody wants to zoom in. They go, hey, that's my figure and I'm not working for any company unless it's less it's that figure or something greater than that period dot mike that's that's my worth and i'm like yeah okay and i usually start the conversation like this and and if steve's listening or somebody's listening he'll he'll laugh because we say this all the time listen you're worth a gajillion dollars a year i tell our members that i said you know you guys move mountains you guys you know uh can, there's nothing you can't do or deliver right so let's just say this right now you're worth a gajillion dollars a year but for the individual stepping into transition and everything, that's remember, that's not the question that you need answered. The question that you need answered is when you've done your design and you've done your market analysis and you're looking at this company, this company and this company, the question that you need answer is what are those companies able to pay you in compensation for doing this type of work in this area for this role and responsibility. That's the question you need answered. And it is likely not to be a gajillion dollars a year, right? I mean, and you do homework and Blue Water has a lot of insight into this. So the point I wanna make is the question that you're looking for an answer is what are these companies that you assess to be a good fit? What are they able to compensate you? for the type of work that you're going to do. And that really is, is many of our members first step into, they're like, oh my gosh, I, I went through the, the compensation calculator. It says I'm worth this much. I'm going to tell you you're worth a heck of a lot more than that. But in this area or with this company, this is all that they can compensate you. And, and so if, if you are going to set a goal of compensation, which I've got absolutely no problem with that. Okay. Don't, don't misread me. If you go, there's no way in hell I'm going to work for two hundred less than $250,000 a year, period dot. And I'm like, okay, let's build that plan. You might be moving. You might be living up in DC. You, you might be living in Seattle, uh, San Francisco, New York, right? Some big, you, you, you're going to be working for some company because the more compensation you're pursuing, right? There's a less, a shorter list of companies that are able to compensate you to that level. Does that make sense? And so, and it might not be the type of work you go, Hey, look, I want to be a kindergarten teacher and there's no way I'm moving from Virginia beach, Virginia, and I'm not going to work for a, a day less than 275,000 a year. Well, you know what? You might not be working very much, right? If that's your, in other words, we call that a misaligned strategy, right? That's your personal strategy, your personal mission, vision, and priorities, something is not aligned there, right? And your expectation in that case would not have been aligned. So we walk individuals through that mindset on how to get in the right headspace and how to approach this. Now, if guys want to come up and do this, we have members that have pursued private equity, venture capital. Uh, you want to go up to DC with some of these very exciting startup companies, right? E even uh, uh, the Microsoft and the Amazon, the AWS are getting into the federal space, secure cloud storage. Those are exciting opportunities, right? Um, Azure, right, with uh, uh, Microsoft and some of these platforms that are out there, Android, some of these exciting companies, uh, Meta and the, and the data storage front, right? There's a lot of that kind of work out there that our members are very well scripted to be able to perform and do and deliver results and do very well at those roles, right? But maybe their heart's in it, maybe it's not. So you, you just have to do a little bit of research if that makes sense. So let me stop and pause there and see see what if, if that makes sense to you. No, absolutely. I mean, because it just all comes down to lifestyle. What are you looking for? I mean, because yeah. our like, because the, what happens often um, is when you're thinking about military retirement is, ah, do I do another three years? Because then I'll get a, a little bit higher okay. uh, salary. Yeah. And it's like, that's great. Are you going to are you going to be able to be in a job? You love those next three years or is it going to be a struggle You know, as you're trying to get out of the military? Of course, that's a decision you have to make. And then likewise, here on the civilian side, you know, these are you know, big numbers one way or the other. And 
it might come to you in a compensation package like deferred or part of retirement um, or it might be base salary. Um, but how how are you seeing anybody make big decisions based based on the salary? At the end of the day, do the numbers have a major impact or does that at, over time as I start to learn going through the blue water process, getting my design, my priorities, recognizing, hey, if I do the other things right, I'm probably going to be in the ballpark of what I was aiming for anyways, and maybe even more. Yeah. so. No, it's a fair question. So a couple of things I want to tease out of that. So direct answer to your question. Are we seeing people that are just, you know, chasing hard, you know, compensation out there? Some, but I can think of two instances off the top of my head where we had members uh, accept an offer with a company that was on order of 15 to $20,000 less than another offer because this one was a better fit. I've absolutely seen members that have come through Blue Water that have had two offers simultaneously that they had worked very hard and they had networked their way into. This one, you gotta be full-time living up DC and this is what it's gonna look like and we're gonna pay you $225,000 a year or 230 or whatever it is. This one for another major industry competitor, also a major defense industry player, right? Okay, no, you can live down in the Hampton Roads area, but two days a week, we'd like to see you kind of traveling around and doing some other things. Hey, but we're only gonna be able to give you a total comp package of around 200, 205. You with me? So clearly there's a disparity within a year of $25,000, right, a year. And at the end of the day, the individual looked at it. And he goes, hey, I think this is a better fit for me and my family. It's going to give me more flexibility. And they took that offer. OK, so I like to think now maybe day one, they would have just jumped on the high dollar. But there's a learning process as you go through your career progression. You go, OK, it's not all about compensation right? Maybe it's about flexibility of life. Maybe it's about, man, I've done nine deployments in my life and I want to try to carve out some time and spend some time with the family, right? Maybe it's that. And so, yeah, I could make more money over here, but dude, it's just like when I was at Amazon at corporate America, right? I mean, in Seattle, you know, uh, South Lake Union, man, I tell everybody, yeah, it was a lot of compensation, right? It, it was almost life-changing for the time that I spent there. But it was a 0430 to 1930 gig every single day. And six months out of the year, it's seven days a week. OK, so that's the level of commitment. Right. And so wrap your brain around that. Yeah. Are you happy getting out of bed at 430 in the morning and driving downtown Seattle into the office to get going? Right. Are you into that kind of thing? And then, oh, by the way, the six months out of the year where it's seven days a week. Hey, no, 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 no. You guys go to Christmas mass. I'll be here on a phone call or, hey, you know, don't. hey, cut the turkey. I'll be in as soon as I can. As soon as <laughs> this phone call, right. It's that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. So, you know, when people step into this, right, you got to you got to wrap your brain around. Are you willing to step in and do that level of, of effort? Right. And heavy lifting. Many are. Some aren't. The other thing I want to tease out. What are we seeing differences between 05s and 06s? Or let me back up even further. For, for now, almost four years, where do we see Blue Water members going, right? Blue Water members are going, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's about 29% major defense industry. So think the Boeings and Lockheed Martin and Northrop Grumman, right? The, the, the big defense industry players uh, that are out there. About 31%, right, end up landing in government contracting firms, right? So not the major defense industries, but like some of our partners, like the two circles or the tech heirs, right? Uh, core service is another one. Prevalence is another one, right? We have, you know, members go to these places. But math in public now, okay, so that's 60%. Where are the 40% of the other members that are stepping through the pipeline? Where are they going? Well, they go in the other bucket. And so what's in the other bucket? I'm talking, you know, corporate America, private equity, venture capital, right? The financial, like you want to go to Capital One, you want to go to 
Microsoft or Amazon. You want to go to, I don't know, Johnson & Johnson. You want to go to Centera Medical. You want to go to these other places. There's opportunities there. And we have a the lion's share. If you just look at the percentage wise, we've got about 40% of our throughput land in the other bucket. So hold that thought. Let's talk differences between 05s and 06s. And for all our members out there, I never, ever wanted Blue Water to be a threat to retention, man. I spent my life wearing the uniform. It's too important to me, right? Um, you know, America needs a strong, you know, set of services. And so stay. Don't, I don't want anybody ever think that, oh my gosh, I got to get going because, man, if I don't start now, I'm not going to get a job. That is completely just, un, we're, I see no data that supports that. Everybody goes, well, Mike, I know age discrimination gets a law, but, you know, I know it happens. I'm like, yeah, it may, but, you know, you're still going to get a JLB, right? I mean, and you're going to be happy and you're going to be fulfilled. So the point is stay. Don't rob our services of the talent that they need in you. Stay. But when the time is right, we're here and we've got you, right? And we're going to funnel you to your next success. And we're going to do it very effectively because we've got the network and the keen insights etc. But between 05s and 06s, yeah, we do see a difference. You know, I was just looking at the data again the other day and, you know, on average, there's about a, maybe a 10 to 12 percent, maybe 15 percent difference in compensation, right? In the defense industry or government contracting bucket, right? And so just hang with me here. So and maybe that's not such a surprise because many of these contracts, you know, are written that if they fill it with a person uh, of this pedigree, this is how much you're going to pay them. If you fill it with a person of this pedigree, this is what the compensation is. And so maybe that doesn't come as a surprise. Now, ask me the question, what differences in compensation do we see or have we seen when members land in the other bucket? So you're talking about the corporate America that doesn't have that direct military where exactly. people kind of understand ah, if you're a colonel, then you should get this much. If you're exactly. You know. Yeah. OK, very so they, very, you know, they don't care about the specific rank that you once held. Like, you know, they, they may if they're yeah. doing some support of some federal program. Sure. But in sure. general, right, in general, we don't see a lot of differences in the other bucket. It, it all comes down to how good of a salesman are you? How clearly, concisely do you communicate your value to a company in their language, mm -hmm. right? I'm getting into my, you know, um, interview pitch, right? Remember, it's not about you, it's about them. And the part that is about you is what you're gonna do for them, right? I mean, you know, we all just wanna make the conversation about us. Hey, I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this. Look how sexy I am, why wouldn't you hire me? And the fact of the matter is, it's 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 not about you. A little bit is, but you have to be able to clearly convey your worth to that company and that hiring manager in their language, right? What are you going to do to solve their problems? And if you're good at that as an 05 stepping in, or maybe some a, a, a more junior person, if you're really good at that, you're going to do well in that other bucket. If yeah. that makes sense, right? And. That brings with it a little bit of uncertainty and there's more networking that you will have to do. And so there's some other things that you'll have to do to achieve that, but it's all achievable is the point I want to make. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is, you know, Blue Water has recently, uh, maybe over the last 18 months, started to see a flag presence coming through, you know, yeah. our cohorts. Our message is starting to resonate, the data, the network that we have, the connections. We're starting to grow and we're starting to visualize, right, uh, you know, uh, what we envisioned years ago. It's now starting mm -hmm. to come into play. And you're like, wow, look at this network. Look at the people I can reach out and touch. We have a lot of insight in a lot of industries and companies and people are willing to help current and future members achieve their vision. But something interesting, you know, I heard a flag officer say something the other day. He goes... And he was a very senior flag officer and he stepped out uh, and he's uh, 62, 63. And his I think a large part of his strategy was to step into the workforce environment. He was going to get hired by one of the major defense industry players at a, at a very high level of compensation and was going to do that type of work for 
you know, a number of years in his mind until he was 67, 69, something like that. He was going to have some earning potential. And what most defense industry companies do, like when you get to 65, that's it, right? I mean, they're they're slowly starting to wean you out. So flag officers that are stepping in at 63 have about two years, right, until you tap into 65. And now yeah. you're going to stay with the company on a waiver or 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 something else. A lot of them are like that, like the Lockheed Martins and Northrop Grumman's, the Boeings, right? You know, they they yeah, do yeah. not you may be able to step back and do some consulting with a company above and beyond that age, but the FTE equivalent sitting in a role, you know, driving some program, it becomes a challenge at that point. And and I remember the the comment that he threw out, he goes, Man, nobody told me that. Like I didn't, I didn't realize that, right? Hmm. And I'm like, Nobody's nobody's going to tell you that. Right. I mean, this is really what Blue Water is about. Right. We can help you with your strategy. We can focus a lot of what you're going to, you know, be dealing with when you step into this new environment. Right. right. So, you know, the TAP or other, you know, institutionalized legacy programs aren't going to tap into that. But so that was a lot kind of centered around compensation and what to expect and what it looks like and some of the comparisons and contrast. But um, the majority, we have a lot of members, uh, Scott, that are happy to stay in the Hampton Roads area. And listen, there is room here and, and you can do all flavors. You can do major defense industry work. You can do government contracting work. You can land in the other bucket if you want here. We have local people here working for companies like Dollar Tree or Meta right. or Facebook, right? Um, we have uh, Centera Medical is another one, Johnson & Johnson, right? I mean, we've got a lot of these companies. And I think that kind of comes as a surprise to many military in this area uh, because we don't run in those circles, right? We just think, oh, yeah. well, it's a military town and this is just, it's government contracting and defense and that's it. Well, that's not true, right? There's a lot of other, you know, things going on around here. You just got to get below the surface level and educate yourself on what's out there. No, absolutely. And um, it, it, I mean, there's, whether it's, any military city or, or some of the bigger ones, you know, the Tampa's, San Diego, yeah. um, there's entrepreneurship communities sure. as well. Not saying you need to go Some start process. a business and be, yeah. be an entrepreneur, but, you know, tapping into those networks, you know, the small businesses need help. Maybe maybe there's other ways to um, create compensation. You know, maybe you take the, the job that gives you less salary but it requires way less of your time, gives you more time at home with your family. And yeah. that way you can help your buddy out who's trying to start a new business. And, and maybe he pays you a few years later once it once it works out. You know, you that's know, kind of look at it like you know, that's your tool belt, right? And yeah. and I think the 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 site picture really comes on for a lot of individuals. It's like, hey, maybe I'm not gonna generate my revenue through just one thing. Mm -hmm. And and many of our flag officers see this right for a number of reasons they go hey i'm going to sit on this board hey i'm also going to consult for this company exactly. i'm also going to do some part-time work for this company and they're negotiating these 1099 engagements if you will right it's not full-time equivalent but but you get four or five of those in your in your tool belt you still have a lot of flexibility you're doing meaningful work you get to control your schedule mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, your total comp is pretty, you know, impressive, right? You've built, uh, you've built that it allows you in your term, I'm going to use your phrase, allows you to continue to build the war chest, right? And yeah. that's what this is really all about, right? Well, it's, it's, you know, ultimately your value is, you know, based on how you can portray your skill sets and communicate them, you know, to someone who needs some sort of help. So that's, that's a personal brand. So yeah. Whether you, you like the word or you want to create a person, you got a personal brand, whether you like it or not. So the more that you can you know, control it, then uh, the better known you are, control that the, the more income you tend to make. Um, if that's your ultimate goal, income also means time, you know, having more control of your time. You know, time uh, buys you money, money buys you time. So and, and, you know, a lot of it is it can be a, a, a tiered approach, right? In other words, I've had members come out and we have a lot of members that that are very purposeful in their design. And and in one instance, it sounds something like, hey, Mike, I've got to find 
you know, meaningful work and a good fit here locally. I need it for the next three years until my family grows up and off to college. Yeah. And now I have more flexibility on the family front. And then I'm worldwide deployable. I can chase bigger things, more exciting things. You know, I'm going to take that experience that I've got and I'm going to step it up and I'm willing to go, you know, wherever at that point. And that's a perfectly acceptable you know, plan. I love oh, I that. Think it's, I think it's the best option. I think yeah. you know, I even write about this in my book. Give yourself a three-year window. No matter where you're starting, always be a rolling three years. That way you never stop networking, never stop building skill sets and just recognizing like, holy cow, I didn't realize this this other opportunity might be here. I, would, you know, I wouldn't have been. We don't realize that. we really are creatures where we had, we we like change. We kind of yeah. thrive yeah. in that world. You know, even but though you've been in a military service for a long period of time. But you know as well as I do, you've done different challenges, different jobs. Mm -hmm. A lot of members that go do a job for two years, two and a half years, and they're like, yeah, I need another challenge, right? I need something else. Yeah. You know? So ex expect that because you're used to it. But there's nobody giving you PCS orders anymore. It's true. And you so you can create it. And then there's no pay scale. Uh, there's, yep. no there's no automatic. You know, everybody's got a uh, president's day off. You know, come on. Yep. <laughs> we're yep. adults now. You know, this is a it's it's funny. Absolutely. And of course, the you know, there's the world of layoffs. And maybe that'll be a topic for uh, another yeah. another day, Mike, because I know you got to get going. But uh, no, yeah. thanks for kind of getting to the nitty gritty of it. You know, just wanted to at the end of the day, the big number thing is going to come up. It yeah. stresses people out. Um, unfortunately, there's never enough of it. L let's be honest. Um, yeah. You know, somebody's making the money, but. You know, well, it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's a crazy economy right now. That's for sure. And so it is. we got to, we got to protect as much as we can get, you know, it's kind of our, Absolutely. our idea with the war chest strategy. And, like, and, hey, and, and you know, this is why for the listeners out there, right. This is why Scott and I are so closely tied and so closely aligned in what it is we do. And, and Scott, you and I've talked about this, right? I mean, we're going to take members and we're going to progress them to their next success, right? You will be successful and there will be some total compensation involved there. But Scott is going to be the guy who's going to think out of the box, right? You know, what not only are you going to do with your thrift savings plan, survivor benefit plan, what options are out there and how to continue to build your war chest as you go forward. Like that is his level of expertise. I just, you know, we're going to focus on the tangible things on how to navigate the space. But Scott, I'm so happy you're a partner that you can advise individuals on how to continue to build that wealth, right? What does that look like? Yep. Because there are a lot more modern type of programs, and you know better than I do, than the legacy institutionalized approach to SPP. That might be a good fit for some individuals out there, but many just step into it because they feel that there's no other option. Well, I'm here to tell you there are other options. Spend some time, talk to Scott. He's got a lot of other options out there. No, thanks, Mike. No, it's just about protecting the wealth and the income yeah. you've earned. Your benefit, the time and service is your biggest asset. That gets you the pension. That gets you the VA disability. That also gets you the option, in this example, to take survivor benefit plan because it's automatic. But if you are healthy, and this is kind of our, our big mantra here saying, yeah. hey, look around in, this, in the world. Most you know, <laughs> our, our, people are not healthy out here. They're, yeah. they're living longer, but they're not live. They're sickly and it's yeah. costing a lot of money. And I you know, know that our military people on average, maybe we put on, you know, maybe it's been a few years, but we're still at m healthier than most. And so if you are, mm -hmm. then you can probably qualify for something that's going to save you a ton of money. There's and options. give you a chance to protect more of your benefits. And, and it's more flexible. Like you say, you can use it periodically and not be penalized with it. I mean, it's just, again, for the listeners, there's some exciting things out there. Reach out. To yeah, but at the end of the day, it's just educating on benefits so you can get through this process and then, you know, keep you know, keep paying it forward. I, we know that as, as you get now, getting jobs, you want to stay in the network. You want to help other people come behind you. And um, so the easier we can you know, help along that process. That's what we're all about. So anybody's out there and you're interested in what you think you may be able to pull down in, uh, in, you know, uh, yeah, talk to Mike, you're stepping into your career progression. Come by. We've got the data. It's not our opinion. It's just data. Right. And so we can shed some light on that. Happy to do it. Thanks, Scott.
Scott, I think I may have missed you. Looks like you're frozen. All right, for everybody else out there, uh, we appreciate you joining us on uh, it's uh, Take a Knee Tuesday, but actually we need to change our title to just Take a Knee, right? And so we'll get busy in doing that. Uh, but I hope everybody else has a great day and we'll talk to everybody next time.